Here are some you try it problems for you to try. So which of the above compounds contain at least one secondary alcohol group? Be careful to look at your structures carefully. Notice that this is a secondary alcohol. There's only two carbons on this, uh, uh, this carbon that is holding the oxygen group. If I look at this, you might think that is secondary, but notice there's a methyl group right here, so this is tertiary. This group is also tertiary. This group is also uh, tertiary, but this alcohol right here, this one is secondary. This is a primary alcohol. So the only groups that we have that have a secondary alcohol is one, and four. What would you name this alcohol? Well, you're going to look for the longest chain, and of course the longest chain is one, two, three, four, five, six. The longest chain then has what on it? A methyl and the hydroxyl group. So we are 1, 2, 3 pentanol or pent-3-ol. Um, and then we have on the number 4 carbon, we've got a, a methyl group. So it's 4-methyl, 3-hexanol. Now we have to look and check, is it 3S4S? If I look at the number 3 carbon, the hydrogen is back, so if I look at the highest priority group, it's going to be oxygen, then this alkyl group here, and then over here to the ethyl group. So that is S. What about number four carbon? The hydrogen is back, the highest priority group has the alcohol on it, and then the ethyl. One, two, three, that also is S. So the correct name is number four. Which reagent cannot be used to prepare a tertiary alkoxide from the alcohol? Okay, to prepare a tertiary alkoxide, and the reason it says stoichiometr stoichiometrically is that you don't want an equilibrium occurring, and an, an equilibrium would be occurring with sodium hydroxide. It cannot be used to get, prepare an alkoxide. So what can I use to do this? Well, sodium hydride does it, potassium does it, sodium amide does it, and methyl magnesium bromide will. The only one that will not do it will only do it with an equilibrium type thing in which is uh, heavily favoring the alcohol is sodium hydroxide. So what alkene would be formed by the dehydration of this alcohol? The dehydrating agent shown here is phosphorus oxychloride, and it is just an, an excellent dehydrating agent um, that does it without any rearrangements. Go ahead and try to figure out which uh, alkene would be formed. If I look at the options given, I'm going to have to have a um, pentene that has a methyl on it. So there are six carbons altogether. This has six carbons, but you don't have a pentene in there. It's actually a butene. This has six carbons, and there is a pentene, so it's a possibility. This is a pentene also. Well, it is it is a pentene with a methyl on it. This is a pentene with a methyl on it, and this is a pentene with a methyl on it. So the only one that we can discard with regards to the carbon skeleton is this one. Now we look to see where would the alkene be located after dehydration. Dehydration is going to give you the most substituted alkene. So it's not going to form over here. 
So we can discard this one. Um, the, the alkene has to be formed between two carbons that are a, 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 this carbon and a carbon that is adjacent to it. You can't have it one carbon away from where the alcohol is. So any double bond that is put over here can't happen. So we can discard this and this alkene. The only one that would be a possibility would be the formation of this alkene. Which way is the best way to make an S chloride from an S alcohol? Okay, if I look at this, uh, reacting with hydrochloric acid would give me both an S and an R chloride because it would go through a carbocation, a planar carbocation, and you would get racemization. If I react with phosphorus tribromide, I would get the bromide, but it would be the R bromide. If I then use sodium chloride, an SN2 would occur, and that would invert it back to the S. So this is a possibility. Let's look at the rest. If I react with tosyl chloride and then followed by hydroxide, I would get inversion um, to, I would take an S alcohol and it would be inverted to an R alcohol. It wouldn't give me an S chloride. If I reacted with potassium hydroxide, excuse me, iodide, nothing would hurt, happen with an alcohol. No SN2 can occur on an alcohol. If I reacted it with thionyl chloride, what would you get? You would get the R chloride, not the S chloride. So the one, best choice here would be right here. One is an SN1. Five is only one SN2. Four wouldn't react with an alcohol. Three would give you an alcohol as a product. So the only one that is the correct one would be Phosphorus tribromide followed by sodium chloride. Which is the correct order of acidity? Starting with the least acidic for the following phenols. Now remember, in order to consider acidity, we look at the electron withdrawing groups. That's what changes here. So consider that electron withdrawing groups pull electrons away from the oxygen, making it more stable. So try to figure out which would be the most acidic groups. Okay, if I look at number C, that's amino group, it has a non-bonding pair on it. It actually pushes electrons uh, toward the oxygen. We consider uh, amino groups to be electron donating. So this one actually is pushing electrons onto the oxygen, making it destabilized. So this would be the least acidic. So either three or four will be the correct answer. And then I see the nitro group, which somewhere back in one of those online lectures, I've told you that nitro groups are the most electron withdrawing. So I see that a is written here as being greatest of electronegativity, I mean greatest of acidity. So just by looking at those two groups, I can say three is the correct answer. EWG stands for electron withdrawing. EDG stands for electron donating group. Which is the best hydride to carry out the following reaction? If you look at this reaction, you can see we have reduction of a ketone. We've learned in, in this, these lectures that sodium borohydride will reduce ketones. So which do we choose? We choose a sodium borohydride to do that reduction. Sodium hydride is just a strong base. It does not reduce anything. Borane is a reducing agent, but it reduces only alkenes. Hydrogen is a reducing agent, but you have to have a catalyst to, for it to reduce anything. The correct answer is sodium borohydride. Would lithium aluminum hydride work? Well, what does lithium aluminum hydride do? It will reduce 
a ketone down to a secondary alcohol, but it also will take this ester and reduce it down to an alcohol. And what you would get over here would be an alcohol group here, and this would be gone in an alcohol group here. So no, lithium aluminum hydride would not work because it would reduce everything, including the ester. What is the major elimination product formed from this reaction? Well, this is a dehydrating reagent, so what's going to happen is it's going to, going to remove water. If I look at the structure of what will form, it will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It will be a hexene. Where will the hexene be? The ene will be on the 2 carbon, and then there would be a 3 uh, methyl. So which is the correct answer? The correct answer is going to be 3-methyl-2-hexene. When phenol is treated with Fremy salt, which is an oxidizing agent, and then it's followed by tin to chloride and water, which is a reducing agent, it makes a compound. What compound do you think it will make? Well, if you remember back when we were, I was telling you about the quinones, uh, we saw that phenol could be oxidized to quinones, and so that is this thing right here, this quinone right here. But quinone, that quinone then would be reduced. What did we see in with the uh, biological quinones? When they're reduced, they be, are reduced to hydroquinones. So the first step would make the quinone, and the second step 